Here's a sample of magnesium. Magnesium has three isotopes, 24, 25, and 26. Let's say we want to know exactly how much of each isotope we have. To do that, we're going to do mass spectrometry. First, we put the sample of magnesium into our mass spectrometer. Stage one turns the atoms into positively charged ions by knocking off electrons. This is done using an electron gun. The positively charged ions then move into an electric field where they gain kinetic energy and accelerate. A key point here is that all the ions gain the exact same amount of kinetic energy. In stage three, the ions move into the longest part of the machine where they drift and separate. So the mixture of ions, which were once together, now begin to separate. We can see that the lighter ones are moving faster than the heavier ones. We know that isotopes have different masses, but they all have the same charge. As a result, they have different mass to charge ratios. The ions with the lowest mass to charge ratio will move quicker through the tube. At stage four, we have a negative plate. The positive ions collide with this negative plate and gain electrons to turn back into atoms. Here, they get detected and a current is generated in the machine. The size of the current is proportional to the abundance. So we can see here that magnesium 25 has the highest abundance and therefore will create the highest current. And 26 has the lowest abundance, so we will have the lowest current. Here's an example of a mass spectrum for a sample of krypton. We've been given the different isotopes and their relative abundance on the y-axis. The goal is to work out the average or the relative atomic mass of krypton. So we're going to write down all the masses and their relative abundances. Once we have all the information from the graph, next we want to work out the average. So we're going to take the mass number and times it by the abundance. We are then going to add this, we are then going to add this to the next isotope. And continue until we've done all of the different isotopes. Then work out the total abundance by adding them all together and divide by the total abundance. This gives us a final answer of 84, and that is the relative atomic mass, or the average of all the different isotopes. Now sometimes relative abundance can be given as percentage. Sometimes we'll be given abundance as a percentage. The only difference now is that we have to divide by 100. And remember that all of the abundances will add up to 100%. The rest of the calculation is the same. Let's try another question. Here we have a mass spectrum of tellurium. And this is what we can see from the periodic table. The mass spectrum of tellurium has a small peak at MZ64. Explain the existence of this peak. So to answer that, let's first have a look at this. This peak was caused by an atom of tellurium with a mass of 124 and a charge of plus one. When we do mass divided by charge, that's gonna give us 124. So that's why we have the MZ value of 124. However, sometimes an atom can lose two electrons during electron bombardment. This creates a two plus ion. So we would create something like this. Let's work out the mass to charge ratio for this species. Mass is 124 and the charge is two plus. That means the MZ value will be 62 and it would have a peak at MZ62. In this question, it says explain why there's a peak at MZ64. So this could be because of a 128 terillium with a charge of two plus. The mass to charge ratio for this would be 64. Here's another style of question. We have three isotopes of magnesium, 24, 25, 26. Magnesium 25 makes up 10% of all the isotopes. And magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24.3, which is the average of all the isotopes. Work out the percentage of 24 and 26. So we're going to write down the isotopes, and we know that 25 is 10%. That means out of 100, 24 and 26 should make up 90%. So we'll call one of them X 
and the other one will be 90 minus x. We know that the average is 24.3, so now we can make an equation and equal it to 24.3. So just like in the first example, we're going to do mass times abundance for all the different isotopes. Then we're going to divide it all by 100 because that is a total abundance. And that should equal 24.3 according to the question. Now we're going to work towards making x a subject. First, times through by 100 and open up this bracket. So now our equation should look like this. Now we can collect the like terms to make x a subject and we should be left with something like this. One final step and divide through by 2 the minuses cancel out on both sides and that leaves us with x equals 80. So if you know x equals 80 for 24, that means 26 must be 90 take away 80, which is 10. And there we have the relative abundance of the two different isotopes. So in this video, we spoke about mass spec and learnt about the different styles of questions you could get. We're going to do another video about time of flight and mass spec for molecules. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.